So Treyarch recently posted a blog containing a ton of information regarding Black Ops Cold War Zombies. I'm going to be reading directly from that blog, but if you'd like to take a look at it for yourself, you can find a link to it down below. Also, really quick, the gameplays in this video are from the custom zombie maps Daybreak and Doris Declassified. Download links for those can also be found in the description. So it starts off with perks. On launch, you'll have access to six different perks. Juggernaug, Quick Revive, Speed Cola, Stamina Up, Deadshot, and the all new Elemental Pop. The details for each of these perks base levels, meaning unupgraded, are as follows. Jug will increase your max health by 50%, Quick Revive will reduce the time it takes to regen health and revive an ally both by 50%, Speed Cola will increase reload speed by 15%, Stamina Up will increase run and sprint speed, Deadshot will remove scope spray and move your ADS to critical locations, and finally with Elemental Pop, every bullet has a small chance to apply a random base ammo mod effect. More perks will also be introduced throughout the post-launch seasons. Next are skill tiers. With these tiers, every perk can be permanently upgraded up to 3 levels. To upgrade the perks, you'll need to earn raw ethereum crystals by reaching milestone rounds within the game or through successful exfiltration. You'll also be able to upgrade skills related to field upgrades, ammo mods, and weapon classes to help you stay alive even longer as you collect and invest more ethereum crystals. Over time, you will use these crystals to improve the tools in your arsenal, improving their damage and utility to help you reach higher rounds. As an example, upgrading the elemental pop perk to tier 3 will grant the following effects. Tier 1, Equipment Damage also has a small chance to apply a random base ammo mod effect. Tier 2, Reduce ammo mod cooldowns by 20%. And Tier 3, When a random ammo mod is applied, it uses your current skill tier instead of the base. Next are Weapon Rarities. Weapons come in 5 tiers of rarity. Common, or your loadout. Uncommon, Rare, Epic, and Legendary. Each tier increases the damage done by those weapons and will also determine how many randomized attachments will come along for the fight. For example, an uncommon weapon will feature around 50% damage boost over its loadout version and comes with just two attachments, while the legendary version kicks that up to roughly 300% damage and comes stacked with eight attachments. Weapon rarities make wall buys and the mystery box even more worthwhile by giving players more options in any given game. Buying your favorite weapon off the wall is now different every time with random attachments thrown into the mix, and the mystery box actually increases its odds of rolling high rarity weapons as the rounds get higher. This creates a new layer of strategy to keep in mind as the match goes on. So what happens if you hit the jackpot on your first spin of the mystery box and get an epic magnum at round 10 and then roll an uncommon AK-74U on your very next spin? Let's just say you're more comfortable with SMGs, but you know your damage potential will become lower as a result of switching. Which one do you keep? Previously, if you found a strong weapon in the mystery box, you had very little motivation to return. Now, even if you roll a weapon you're happy with early in the game, you can return 10 rounds rounds later and try to roll the legendary version. Next are custom loadouts. First and foremost, empowering players to bring all of their unlocked weapons and cosmetics into zombies takes the action up a notch and gets everyone into the higher rounds faster. This gives players more freedom to play their way, especially for those who want to get a better feel for how much fun zombies can be after the first few rounds. Loadouts don't change the classic zombies formula as much as you might think. If starting out with a classic 1911 pistol is your jam, go for it. The design team carefully considered how loadouts would affect weapon progression gameplay and as such, loadouts in zombies are simplified compared to those in multiplayer. You can only bring a single weapon and field upgrade with your zombies loadout. Furthermore, that single weapon will have its attachments and cosmetics, but it will be the lowest rarity available, which is common. This means your starting weapon won't be very effective at killing zombies after a handful of early rounds, and you'll still need to get out there and find other weapons quickly. You can also upgrade the rarity of your weapons in-game, so you can take your customized loadout weapon into the higher rounds if that's more your style. Next are field upgrades. Field upgrades in zombies are are entirely different from those found in multiplayer. These are tools designed to fit the narrative of the Dark Aether story and provide a welcome power spike as part of the core combat loop without making players OP in the process. Zombie field upgrades available at launch will include Frost Blast, create a frigid blast of wind that deals frost damage and slows enemies caught inside of it, Healing Aura, summon beams of energy down on yourself and allies to instantly heal to full health, Energy Mine, create a mine of pure energy that detonates in the proximity of enemies dealing explosive damage, Ring of Fire, create a ring of ethereal fire that boosts damage for you and allies that last 15 seconds, and finally Aether Shroud, phase into the dark Aether for 5 seconds becoming hidden from enemy detection. The design of these field upgrades take inspiration from several action based abilities in previous zombies games, including certain gobble gums, elixirs, and even some non-passive perks. Each one is balanced with an appropriate number of zombie kills required to charge it. For example, Healing Aura has the upgraded ability to revive players on the map remotely, but requires double the kills to charge than an offensive based field upgrade, such as Energy Mine. 
mind. Next is Armor and Salvage. Replacing the crafted shield of previous zombies' experiences, Armor provides a 360 degree layer of protection. Armor can be found as a rare drop from enemies or purchased using Salvage. When worn, it will mitigate a portion of incoming damage, but its durability is limited. Although Armor is partially repaired by picking up the occasional Armor Shard drop from certain enemies, it's a limited resource and you'll find yourself vulnerable again once you've run out of Salvage to repair it. You can also fully repair Armor by picking up a Carpenter power-up. Armor can also be upgraded to additional levels, increasing its damage mitigation and durability. Remember, even when paired with an upgraded Juggernaut perk, no amount of armor can save you if you find yourself overrun, especially as rounds get higher and the challenge increases. Next is support and score streaks. At launch, the available support selection will include combat bow, sentry turret, war machine, chopper gunner, and self-revive. You can even obtain some of these score streaks by rolling them in the mystery box. Also, any support that takes perspective away from your character will temporarily make you immune to damage and ignored by enemies while it's deployed, such as the chopper gunner. This ensures that solo players can make use of support as well. Next is loot and crafting. In Black Ops Cold War Zombies, every zombie has a small chance of dropping resources including salvage, armor, and even lethal and tactical equipment. The tougher the enemy, the better the loot. As you unlock equipment and score streaks through standard player progression, that content will become available at the crafting table in-game and can be crafted using resources. Rarity is also assigned to loot based on its effectiveness. For example, a frag grenade is considered uncommon loot, whereas the symbol monkey is a rare drop. Next is the exfil. With the new option to exfil from the map when your squad can't last much longer, you can roll the dice and try to survive long enough to escape with some extra rewards, but it won't be easy. Starting at the end of round 10 and every 5 rounds after, you'll have an option to use a radio in the starting area of the map to call in exfil. In a co-op game, a majority of the players must vote to initiate exfiltration. Once triggered, the normal round will end and you'll be given a new objective to reach the exfil site within a specific time limit. At this point, zombies will begin to flood the area in a last ditch effort to stop your squad in its tracks. Once you reach the site, a helicopter will fly in and hover above until the zone is cleared before it can land. If you manage to make it onto the chopper, you'll escape with some bonus XP and the chance to earn some raw ethereum crystals. And the last bit of information is about the ping system. This will function the same way it does in Black Ops Cold War's multiplayer, activated by pressing left on the d-pad on controllers and Z on keyboards by default. Whether you're marking the next door you need a friend to open, pointing out the pack punch machine to a first timer, or pinging the latest location of the mystery box for your squad, we think this feature brings a huge quality of life improvement to Black up zombies players. So with all of that being said, let me know down below what you think so far and if you're excited for Black Ops Cold War Zombies. Well that's pretty much it for this video, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.